Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. I have an absolutely crazy number of daffodils. They're not all going here. They're, some of them are going on to a uh, landscape job that we've been uh, working on and some are going to just be gifted uh, to some neighbors, but it is just a crazy amount. Uh, we've, these are all from Color Blends. Uh, I'll put a link down uh, to their uh, site uh, down below. These are great bulbs. I think one of the keys uh, to your spring flowering bulbs is to get good bulbs. You know, this isn't, I'm not being paid by them or anything. I'm just telling you that I've had experience, but you know, buying uh, less expensive, smaller bulbs. And uh, you know, every time we get stuff from Color Blends, uh, they turn out great. I said in a video um, just a little while back that we were gonna go only with bulbs that would naturalize in the landscape uh, this time around. So I didn't wanna get tulips or hyacinths. I may have a few tulips and hyacinths come back from last year. Uh, depends, on, depends on the winter, honestly. Uh, they were left in place. So if they come back, they come back. But for the most part, they don't, or they're slightly inferior to what they were the year before um, each year. And so I didn't wanna refrigerate any bulbs. I didn't wanna do this as annuals. The only annuals I wanna do in the landscape going forward are ones that I can do from seed, that I can collect seed on, so on and so forth, just trying to reduce our uh, footprint. So I'm gonna go through and show you uh, lots of uh, daffodil bulbs. I've got several ways to put bulbs in the ground. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, I've got, the, I've got a drill and a drill bit. Been drilling holes in the ground for bulbs for for 30 some years and uh, so we've got that technique and of course i have just a good old-fashioned trowel lots of shovels all the normal uh implements of destruction that a person would have for gardening but i'm actually going to use my uh, uh pro uh, <laughs> my pro plugger easy for me to say i have two of these pro pluggers they had sent me these two again this is not another paid thing they they sent me these and uh, i had done a couple giveaways for them I have ended up with two of them, so I'm going to do a local giveaway. If anybody wants to uh, comment down below this video and you live in the Raleigh, North Carolina area, and it's not going to be like a six-hour drive to come here and get it, um, don't do that. <laughs> if you're, you know, I don't want you to go out of the way. Uh, I'll link this down below. It'd probably be less expensive than the uh, $3 and some cent gas uh, to come and get it uh, if you're a long way away. So if you're in the Raleigh area, leave your name down below. Just say uh, local um, and... Uh, I'll pick from those and pick somebody you can drive over here and uh, grab your pro plugger. The nice thing about the pro plugger here is it's got, and I'm gonna use this today. Uh, it's a feature of this thing. Uh, this digs a six inch hole down here at the bottom. You step on, this is a piece you step on and it digs a six inch hole down in the ground. And it comes with these rings that, uh, it's a piece of Velcro, apparently Jim is not. Uh, an expert with Velcro. Okay, there we go. Uh, these two rings, one of them uh, will slide onto the end and allow you to dig just a four inch hole. You see how that works? It just took two inches away from the depth that'll go into the ground and then there's one for just a two inch hole like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this four inch hole because I want the bulbs down about, uh, about three times the depth of the height of the bulb and so that four inch one should be good. Um, if I find it, it's not going quite deep enough, um, I'll just take it off and do the uh, six inches. Uh, the, the, the reason I'm using the pro plugger instead of the drill, honestly, at this point is that I can take this, uh, because we've done so much soil improvement out here with wood chips and with compost and with mulching so many times, I can now take this pro plugger with one hand and put it almost all the way down in the ground are certainly deep enough to plant that bulb and it just pulls out the soil in the end you flip it over and drops the soil right back in there so uh and that's the way we're going to do this i'm actually going to dig a hole with the pro plugger drop the bulb in flip it back over put the soil back and it's planted uh quick and easy so um let's go over the different daffodils holly is right down there in the grass we have several bulbs going in uh, this area over by the uh, the bird bath over there. Uh, I'm gonna bring my pro plugger over here and lay it there. And then, uh, so I got my invoice uh, from Color Blends um, right here, and got some got got you know they they tell you how tall they're gonna get uh, on the invoice. And uh, all these are good. Um, all these are good for southern gardens. Um, that is not the piece of paper that I needed. Hold, break, 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 break break 
Okay, break, we're on break. Okay, we're back. This is from last year. We will draw out this little curvature of lawn here and the bulbs that have gone in the ground around it so that when we're digging, uh, the bulbs come up, of course, and then in uh, January, um, late January, February, whatever, uh, and then bloom, you know, mid to late February, early March. And then as soon as they get some heat on them, you know, they start to die back. And by mid to late spring, they're gone. And then we're out here digging uh, at that time. So uh, we do have it all mapped out on here. Uh, we went through and, um, you know, I recommend this when I'm doing consultations. If you bring home 10 or 15 different plants in different containers, um, you can lay them out in the containers on the ground. You don't have to, stop, holly. No, ma'am, no, ma'am, whatever you're doing over there. That's not a thing. That is not a thing. That's not gonna be a thing, okay? I can't concentrate while you're doing silly stuff, okay? All right, so if you bring home 10, 15 plants, let, you can just lay them out in the containers and then you know go to work, come back home, look at them a few times, rearrange them. What we do on something like this bulb planting is uh, go through on a piece of paper and just write down the name of the bulb and place it here and then place some there and there and there. And that's what we've got bricks with little, you know, little pieces of paper with bricks sitting on them so we can move them about and uh, see that that's where we want them to go. Live with it for a couple days. You don't have to just stick them right in the ground. And so I know that this spot is going to have some baby boomer daffodils go in it and it's a dwarf one and uh, Holly's gonna be right in the camera. So I'm gonna go over there and grab my baby boomer daffodils, which they do a good job of marking the bags on them. Uh, because this is a dwarf, the bulbs are a bit smaller. You can see a nice uh, bag of these. Again, I'm only gonna put, I don't know how many groups of these baby boomers were slotted to go out here, maybe two or three. So I'll use about a third of the bag. Um, the other landscape jobs we have are uh, bigger than what we have going on, going on here. So why daffodils? I mean, you know, obviously they're little happy um, <laughs> little happy faces in the early spring that, uh, you know, that spring is coming, you know, kind of an indicator that spring is coming. And then, uh, um, you know, rodents don't go after them. Squirrels don't go after them. You know, um, nothing, nothing eats them. And so they're very reliable for almost everyone watching. And so you don't have to refrigerate them or dig them up or do anything. They'll naturalize for almost everybody. Color Blends has a list that are the best ones for the South. And so if you do live in the deep South, you know, I would go with their list. Uh, those of you who are not can pretty much go with any daffodil uh, that you want to plant. Uh, I'm just gonna take, you know, like a handful of these are gonna ultimately end up going here. Just a random, very random number. Again, very nice bulbs. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna bring this over here real quick. These are actually multiples. Almost all of them could have probably been divided they're, uh, daffodils are easy to tell the top from the bottom. You know, the top is the pointy part. The bottom obviously had the roots on it. Some bulbs you can't tell. If you can't tell, you can plant them sideways <laughs> and it'll all work itself out. Uh, the other thing that this pro plugger is good for is I actually have some garlic coming up here. So I want to show you something real quick. There's garlic. Garlic and onions are super easy to remove with this thing. Again, my soil's in good shape, so uh, watch this. I'm gonna flip this over, let it slide out, and watch this. Look at this. I'm able to get the whole bulb out of the ground from that wild garlic. You see that? It might not have been in front of the camera. Right there, you see it? I got the whole bulb, so. Don't have to worry about them coming back up. A lot of times if you try to pull these, the bulb doesn't come up. So that pro plugger does a good job. So I just, I got them out of that soil and I'll throw the soil back in that hole and they're gone, right? Uh, so that's, that's nice. So I'm gonna bring the camera closer and uh, show you this operation real quick. I won't show you planting a hundred, you know, 500 bulbs. It's the same once you see it once. So baby boomer's a dwarf. Uh, I use these in a container in the back garden. This is a fragrant one. Um, and uh, uh, it has multiple flowers on each stem. 
And again, this is what you'll get, you know, in your color blends uh, invoice. Yellow, 12 to 14 centimeters. So set uh, seven to eight inches high, nine flowers per stem. Fragrant, good one for the south. Um, so again, four inches. I'm going three times the height of the bulb is where I'm going to set the bottom of the bulb. So two times the height above the bulb, I guess, is what we're actually going for. If I put this here, that four inch thing should be about perfect because I'm actually going to mulch this space as well very soon. And so I can just take this, press it down right there, drop my bulb into that hole, flip the pro plugger over, and <laughs> I just planted. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Okay. Again, pointy side up, flip the pro plugger over, poked it out, boom, just like that. And then again, like I say, I'm gonna mulch over this pretty soon. This soil is so good now that I can just do it by hand, just like that. The bulb in there, flip it over. You can store lots of soil in this tube, so I can create all these holes and just store the uh, soil. The soil will just keep climbing the tube, but I find that this, one at the time, soil right on top of it, it's just quick and easy. It's just quick and easy. If I was doing giant bed, I would probably dig up the whole area, put the bulbs in, and then recover the whole thing. I've done that before on video. If I was doing kind of a medium amount, I'd probably have the drill out over here. Um, Cause it's obviously slightly quicker than this, but here in this little really, um, you know, we're at the point in this landscape where we're just putting in five bulbs here, and eight bulbs there, you know? So this is the perfect tool, perfect tool for that. Bam. Can't see it behind the rock. I'll get back over here. This is the most random thing, guys. There is no, there's not gonna be any row of anything here. I'm trying to get it as random as I can. Bam, perfect. And I have about three more bulbs. I threw out a random number and I'm putting them in random spots in the general location of one another. And that's about it. Okay, boom. Last one. And again, I'm gonna mulch pretty soon. So if I had, if my mulch had not broken down, my mulch is really broken down. It's almost just bare soil over here. If my mulch had not broken down, I'd be pulling the mulch back, then doing this, and then putting my mulch back in place. I don't want that mulch down in the hole. But what I've got here is almost completely broken down. The next spot further back from those uh, baby boomers, I actually see one of these baby boomers I didn't plant. Look at that. Look at that. I tried to get away. I can do this by hand right there. Bam. Get them in there, point up, and bam. <laughs> tried to get away, didn't it? Okay, good. All right, so got a variety called Early Cheer back here, and these are gigantic. I mean, really, really big bulbs. Um, really really big daffodil bulbs these get like 12 flowers on each stem uh, really great um, naturalizing uh, daffodil one thing about picking the space that you're putting your daffodils they need sun but they only need sun when you know in the early or in the late winter or very 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 early spring so we can kind of get away with putting these in a little more shade uh, with some place that might be shadier in the summertime just needs good sunlight in January, February, March, you know, into early April. So, you know, keep that in mind. Since these bulbs are bigger, I need to dig deeper holes. And so we're gonna take off that four inch ring off of the uh, pro plugger. We're gonna pull this, these leaves back. Okay, I don't do anything with my leaves out here. We just leave them in place. <laughs> uh, and here, I'll push down on this six inches, pull that back out, drop this bulb pointy end up and it's the perfect size this is like the perfect size hole for that bulb to slide in there one other thing about site selection is um, we need uh 
a place that dries out between rains and watering. You wouldn't want a spot that's going to be wet. Uh, you know, most of this garden here, um, you know, if it's not raining, it's, you know, it dries out. That's kind of key. Uh, again, these are just gigantic bulbs here. They're almost as big as this pro plugger will dig a hole. Oh, and it's just perfect. Look at that. Just like that. Okay. There's only like 25 of these in a bag because they're so big. I'm going to put about nine or so in this space. I'll put the names of the other daffodils that I'm planting out here in the front garden um, on the uh, screen here and uh, won't, you know, show you over and over and over again the same exact thing. Got a variety going over here called Kedron, and it looks like it's in a little trapped space here, but my butterfly bush will get cut down uh, before these come up. I got a salvia that's already dying back to the ground right, right there, and then this uh, hydrangea paniculata, um, which I don't think you can see the flowers on, but uh, it'll get cut down. Right here we've got some English ivy trying to come up, probably came up from seed. Another good use for this, <laughs> another good use for this pro plugger. And it just liquefied it. No, it just took it, took it down in the ground. Okay, there it is. Bam, there it is. It's out of there, okay. Fill that hole back in, okay. So this, these are Kedrons. This is, a, I'm stepping on a juniper back here. This variety has, it's yellow with kind of an orangey center. These are actually Steph's favorite. So have the little happy uh, orange centers on them. But again, same, same kind of thing here. Uh, the nice thing about color blends is they'll send you your bulbs when it's time for them to go in the ground for the most part. Uh, if you get them early, you, know, you can store them in a cool place. Here we are in mid-November as I'm filming this. It's actually Thanksgiving week, so it's a little past mid-November. Uh, these are, uh, the ground temperature's cool enough now to, uh, to put these in the ground. I, I wait till the soil temperature's definitely below, you know, mid-50s or something like that for, um, for daffodils. There's a website you can check your soil temperature on or you can get a soil temperature probe and uh, check your soil temperature. You're, if you're in the south and you're cold treating uh, bulbs like uh, tulips and hyacinths and that kind of thing, it's a little early to put those in the ground. Uh, but uh, daffodils, they won't, they won't try to come up uh, too. They all, well, they'll always try to come up a little bit early here, uh, uh, but not this early. Um, sometime in January, we'll see a few of them peeking up a hair early, but they're so tough, it doesn't matter all that much. But Again, this is one of those spots where it doesn't look logical to put them, but it will be when everything's completely died back over here. These will be all sunny and happy, and then the other stuff will come up, grow really quickly, and cover them up, and I don't have to watch them fade back down into the ground. If you've got those kind of spots. One other thing I'm gonna say about daffodils is they will face kind of toward the south a bit in the, uh, when they're blooming. And so these will face right toward the path, right here beside me. Uh, the ones that I've put over there on the other side of the lawn, uh, some of them will probably face in toward that path that way. So I'll really see them coming, walking back from the backyard. But keep in mind, if I put them all the way on the property line over there, <laughs> they're just gonna face the neighbor's uh, garden for the most part, because the flowers do wanna open toward the sun. The spot on the other side of the driveway over here is one of my perfect spots, and I'll be putting some over there as well because every one of those faces this direction. So one more on the ground, and, uh, and that'll be it. I've had these bulbs for a couple weeks. Uh, they sent them to me, and I haven't had time to get them in the ground, so I just kept them in a cool spot out on the uh, uh, cool, dry spot out on the back porch. and. Uh, brought them in on one night that got super, super cold. But again, I'm flipping my piece of paper over, putting my rock back on there, and then I'll put, add them to the map. The next variety I'm doing is Hawara, Hawara, Hawira, Hawara. This one is another <laughs> daffodil that has multiple blooms on the same stem. This one's yellow. I don't think I said on that early cheer that it's white with some yellow uh, on it. After I plant these, I leave the paper here with my brick or rock or whatever I held it down with, and I just flip it upside down. That way I know I have planted that spot, but
but it needs to be added to the uh, to the plan. Uh, the mulch is a little bit heavier over here. I mean, it's just chunkier. So I'm gonna pull some of it back. Uh, I could do this with a rake, obviously. But this bulb is somewhere in between the size of the baby boomers and the early cheers. And so um, I think I need to leave that ring off of the uh, pro plugger and uh, put them down. Uh, let's see, about that deep. Let's see, that's something here. It's like a rock or something there. I don't know what's going on there. Oh, that's a root. Oh, that's, <laughs> it's amazing. That maple that was way across the garden over there or my neighbor's, neighbor's maple over here, you know, I'll run into uh, roots from it. Uh, there's a, went down better there. Drop the, drop the bulb in there. Pointy end up. And again, I'm just gonna put, you know, nine or 10 bulbs in this small landscape. I'd like to have clusters like that of, you know, just small clusters. And, you know, if I had a large, you know, at the old house, I'd put in, you know, very large groups of bulbs just to make a big statement in a big space, you know. But in a small space like this, where all I have really is little pockets, um, I want bright and showy pop of color from these. Uh, but without, uh, you know, eating up the whole garden. After they bloom in the spring, I will... Uh, uh, wait for the foliage to die back on them before we uh, cut them back at all. You know, it's real tempting to uh, cut them back. You can fold the foliage over and tie it up if you want to. Always seems like more work than it's worth. I'm going to put annuals probably right over the top of them in the spring. And so uh, I'll just plant the annuals right in them and uh, the annuals will grow. will grow in there by the time the daffodils die back. The annuals will have some size on them and, you know, move on with life do I fertilize them no no actual reason to everything this bulb needs is in the bulb already and I will fertilize this entire garden while probably you know they may be in bloom at the time the whole garden is being it'll probably be slightly before they bloom when I fertilize this space and so I'll just go right over the top of it this everything we've done to this soil will take care of these bulbs they don't need anything in fact they don't even need any ongoing fertilizer uh, they just continue to need to be mulched I'll water them in just to settle this soil in real quick it's, it's the soil's kind of moist right now but we've been super dry so uh, just in general um, you know water them once to settle them in and usually that's all you need um, this winter <laughs> who knows uh, or if you live in an area that just doesn't get rain uh, you may have to water them some, but again, let them dry out a little bit between rains and waterings. I'm going to kick this leaf debris and stuff back over top. You don't even know they got planted except for my upside down sign right there. Okay, that's that. I got a couple other spots for each of these and several more varieties to put in. So, um, thank you guys for following along with the channel. Um, I'm going to be giving bulbs away like Santa Claus in the neighborhood, and so. You'll see a video on that as well. Plus, I've got some species tulips that are going to go in the ground and probably some of these going in containers as well. So thanks for watching.